I'd like to say it is a, it's a privilege for me to, to get to speak with you today about my experience studying and, and using mesenchymal stem cells to heal uh, complicated fractures. And, and as a sidebar, it's, it's a privilege for me to work at UC Davis where I do have the opportunity to work with such great researchers and bring this sort of technology to patients. What are the problems? So in orthopedic trauma, like a trauma center like Davis, where we deal with high energy trauma every day, we deal with fractures that have bad soft tissue injuries and lead to bone loss. And you're looking at an x-ray image of a fracture just above the knee. And a, what you see is a lot of bone fragmentation. And, and after fixation, what you'll appreciate is that the fracture is well aligned and fixed with an implant. But what's more striking to me is the fact that there's a large segment of missing bone. This is a problem for this patient because just because the bone is fixed doesn't mean that this will be a functional limb. I think it's even more striking, I apologize for the graphic nature of this image while you're eating lunch, but <laughs> what you're seeing here is a knee joint and what you can see is a massive area of missing bone. And I think it's important to realize that this is a, an area that will not heal without help and a problem that we don't have great solutions for at this point in time. Fractures also do not have to have bone loss to have problems healing, and I'm showing you here a fracture of a tibia, and in the central portion of the tibia, an area that just has failed to heal. And as long as this has failed to heal, and without intervention, this will not be a functional extremity. And for both of these patients, having these unhealed or non-healing fractures, or what we call non-unions, will, will lead to great disability, uh, pain, and, and dysfunction. So how do we manage this problem? This is a problem that we deal with all the time at trauma centers where we have bone loss or fractures that don't heal. Well, we do have lots of older ways of dealing with them. Things like amputation, taking the extremity off, shortening the extremity. Uh, these aren't very novel or even bringing harvesting bone from other parts of the body to fill defects. We even have the technology to stretch bones, a technique called distraction osteogenesis which can actually grow new bone over many, many months. A segment of 14 centimeters might take you 12 to 14 months to regrow. While these are, are good, they all have cost. And that's really the problem that we're trying to address with the use of stem cells. If you take off a limb, obviously there's going to be functional loss. Anytime we take bone from another part of the body, there is functional loss from that side and there's morbidity at the, at the harvest site. Uh, the distraction process I described to you is only going to work in patients who can stay under treatment for 14 months. And we do have recombinant protein technology that I'm sure you're all aware of that could help us heal bone, but that's very expensive and has its own local problems with applications in patients like these. So what do we do? Well, let me just show you the, our current, uh, current techniques that we deal with, for, uh, that we use for these patients. Here another patient, a similar situation, a high energy motor vehicle accident. This patient has two horrendous fractures above the knee on both sides, okay? And as I mentioned before, our technique is to fix them at the appropriate length with the state of the art implants that we have. But again, if you look here, this whole segment above the knee is absent of bone. Here just filled with, with cement to hold the space, bone cement. So what do we do these days? Well, a great way or a good way to get bone to heal is to actually harvest it from the iliac crest or just above the hip. Uh, and as you can see there, we make a large incision and then we harvest out what looks like a reddish crouton type material. And that material is great. It's structure. It probably has protein signaling. It certainly has cellularity that's going to be important for bone formation. But the problem you can appreciate there is that's you know, maybe after a harvest you could only end up with 10 or 15 cc's of graft. And if you appreciate those images of those defects, we're talking about defects that might take 60 or 70 cc's of material to fill. So what do we do? Well, we don't have great techniques at this point. We extend it by using allograft or freeze-dried bone. We add ceramics that we have available to us off the shelf. And we'll even use those recombinant proteins I talked to you about, which are an expensive option. But really, we're just trying to expand uh, a source that is very limited. So the limitations I mentioned are the morbidity, especially from that incision, in that incision on the hip bone, which can cause pain and certainly has a limited volume. Again, the long healing times in defects like these, if, if we're successfully treating a defect like that, it might take up to a year to heal. And again, what's really are, what really are unreliable techniques. So as clinicians, this is frustrating. So what, what has been our approach? Well, our approach has been to try to use our collaborations and our opportunities at Davis and to use mesenchymal stem cells. And for me, I've worked on myself looking and improving the small animal models to help me understand, to help me prove that the concepts are right. 
It's to collaborate with scientists like Kent and engineering to improve the scaffolds and the way that we can deliver cells. And then the, what's a nice opportunity at a trauma center like ours is to actually translate this technology to the patients. My initial experience was in small animals, in rodents, and we did some simple fracture models. And you can see this is a simple stabilized fracture in a rat femur that we were able to successfully treat with mesenchymal stem cells. But this wasn't the type of problem that we were having in patients. We could, we could solve the simple fractures. And we felt we needed to move to a more significant or clinically relevant model. And what you see here is a stabilized rat femur with a bone defect removed. And this has been a nice technique that we've validated. And it's been perfect for us to uh, study and test mesenchymal stem cells and different scaffold combinations. However, what we've realized is that the larger animal models can be helpful. They can help us because the bone size is larger. We can use the same types of clinical interventions and implants that we use in human patients. And they may have higher translational value. And we, again, have that unique opportunity at UC Davis to collaborate with our School of Veterinary Medicine and our scientists and uh, clinicians over there. And we've done work in some larger animals. Here we're working on a, a sheep, working on a defect model in the sheep. And again, using a mesenchymal stem cell preparation to fill that defect in the bone. But I think what I'm most excited about is talking to you about the translational art and our experience actually with using mesenchymal stem cell technology in patients. We actually are completing one of our two clinical trials. We're actually completing one clinical trial and preparing to start another on a couple of techniques at the point of care where we can actually provide mesenchymal stem cells to patients with problem fractures. The first one involves using bone marrow aspirate concentration systems. And this came some from, from, from work that was done in Europe using a similar technique where they actually were able to aspirate marrow from iliac crest and using a rather primitive technique at that time, but then concentrate the, the fraction of that aspirate that contained the mesenchymal stem cells. This, uh, they used these in non-unions and injected them and had a very high healing rate. And while this was a very primitive technique, it definitely inspired us to try this in our patients. Again, we had the opportunity of innovation and technology here regionally with a company that developed this system that allowed us to actually, at the point of care in the operating room, aspirate bone marrow and in an, uh, with an automated system right there at bedside, concentrate it down, concentrate that cell fraction that contains the MSC, the mesenchymal stem cells, and process it quickly so that we could immediately re-deliver re it to the patient. So this is what the, the hardware looks like. Again, we would provide, this is all in the operating room, provided to us on the sterile field. We aspirate about 60 cc's of bone marrow from both iliac crests while the patient's asleep, so it's totally painless. It's centrifuged, handed off the field sterilely into a sterile, sterile materials. It's centrifuged and, again, delivered back to us. And what's delivered back to us is a 6 cc, 6 milliliter concentrate that, con that contains uh, high numbers of uh, mesenchymal stem cells. And what's nice is we were able to send this concentrate over a portion of the concentrate to prove that these cells were there. And again, with collaboration at the CIRM-funded uh, Good Manufacturing Practice Facility, show that, these, that this uh, population of the fluid, the cells in this population of fluid actually did form bone-forming cells. So our, our study for this uh, technique has been a single-site pilot study. We're enrolling our, our last patients this week using non-unions or segmental defects like I showed you on the x-rays. Again, doing pre- and post-concentration cellular analysis, and then looking at the x-rays, which is nice with bones, because you can prove that they heal by looking at x-rays, and then also asking the patients how they did, which is obviously important as well. And I'll just show you a couple examples of patients from this study. Again, this is a, a patient, this is a forearm fracture. You can see it's very displaced. This is a patient from an industrial accident, had his arm caught in a press. Again, after he's cleaned up, the wounds are clean, the bones are stabilized, it's stabilized and fixed, but we're missing bone. And then over time, what you see is an area of bone loss that without bone forming, you're going to have hardware failure and you're going to have a dysfunctional extremity. In this patient, we removed his hardware, we debrided or cleaned the area that wasn't healed, and we used that bone marrow concentration system in that area that's not healing. And at three months, he completely regenerates that three centimeter section of bone using those concentrated uh, bone marrow cells. Here's another patient, another typical patient. This is a humerus or upper arm fracture. You can see it angulated. It's mo there's movement there. It's not healed. 
This patient also has multiple sclerosis. We offered him, or we suggested that he have iliac crest bone taken from him, but he was concerned about his ambulatory function. He was already a minimally, minimal ambulator, having difficulty walking with his MS. He didn't want a bone graft harvest. So we offered him enrollment in our study, and again, what we did the same technique. We realigned the bones, we compressed them, and we applied the stem cells from the bone marrow concentration system. And here he is, right after surgery, he's realigned, and the stem cells have been applied, and here he is a few months later completely healed. So these are very, these are exemplary, pa these are patients, many patients like this in our study, and the outcomes are, have been very good. And just one other technique I want to tell you about, a study that we're about to initiate, is the idea of harvesting MSC from the inner surface of long bones. We have known for a long time that if we grind the inner parts of bones and we place implants in them that have fractures that they heal well, and we've had an idea that there are some cells inside the inner surface of the bone, the endosteum, that may have special ability to, to heal uh, fractures. And what we've developed over time is the ability to harvest this bone using these motorized uh, techniques of passing these grinders. Again, we pass them through small incisions at the top of bones. That is a, the grinding device inside of the bone, but it's got a suction system. It, it pulls the material back and collects it. And we collect it here, and it sort of looks uh, what people describe like uh, cranberry sauce, but it has some solid material and obviously the mesenchymal stem cells and proteins as well, and we use that as graft. Some people, though, started to wonder, you know, in, in the collection of that, we also liberate a large amount of fluid, and one of the th questions was, are there valuable mesenchymal stem cells that we're losing that could potentially be concentrated from that effluent? And so our current study that we're focusing on is a, a study with some very new technology to actually concentrate now, not from a bone marrow injection, but from that effluent from the other harvest technique, whether or not we can actually concentrate with high efficiency mesenchymal stem cells from that effluent, which had previously been discarded. So we do have techniques at the point of care that we can provide stem cells, and we do have some scaffolds. But really, every technique that we have for dealing with non-unions or fractures that fail to heal and fractures that have bone loss have limitations, and I hope you can appreciate those that I've, the ones that I've shared with you. So for us, ideally, as a trauma surgeon, as I look at it, the ideal implant for this situation would be something that's cellularized, potentially, that's a resorbable polymer, maybe a bioceramic composite that's populated with MSC, something that could be customized to size, shape, and strength, and something that's ready to implant, something produced at a GMP facility. That really, for us, would be an ideal implant. And, and the exciting thing for me is I think all of this is easy to achieve at UC Davis, and I, and I think we're close and, and we're ready to proceed with studies that can make that happen. Thank you. <laughs>